this is, this is, this is. Ryan, what's up? You, so, you going by William now? Do I call you William or is No, man, of course not. So, you call me Ryan. <laughs> uh, it was it's it's my it is my name. It's my first name. Uh, it's my grandfather's name. I've always kind of like had this thing my whole life where I wondered why. Why did you why mom and dad did you choose to call me by my middle name? I I actually really like William. I like that it's my grandfather's name. My grandfather was a badass. He was like one of my favorite people that I've ever known. And I would have been stoked and honored to carry that name and use it as my name will or william or whatever he went by william the full thing um <clears throat> but my parents called me by my middle name for some reason so uh when yellow card ended and i and i finally circled back around to making my own music i just thought it would be a, a, a good way to sort of differentiate what i was doing from from yellow card M but to be honest dude most people if anyone recognizes me from the time in the band 80 percent of people say Hey, are you the guy from Yellow Card? Twenty percent say, <laughs> "Are you Ryan Key from Yellow Card?" So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but um, but of course, you could still. I mean, I'm still Ryan to to my buds. No, I think it makes sense actually to to use William Ryan Key for your solo stuff. It does yeah. differentiate a little bit, which is cool. Uh, by the way, I gotta say, dude, what led to the all black sleeve? Because it makes you look like a badass. I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't had any any uh, ink done on on my left arm probably since like 2005. So it, it it's it's really old stuff, you know. And um, it wasn't as as I think a lot of people have this problem or or not a problem, but make this sort of uh, make this a thing where like it just wasn't thought out. You know, it was a bunch of kind of random crap that just went on there over those first like five years, six years of getting tattooed. And I don't know, I just. As I've gotten older, and and I, I feel like in the last two or three years specifically, I've really kind of turned a corner into like a new chapter for my life and my mental health and my focus and my career and the music I'm making and what I want to do with music and you know just really kind of starting to have some some clarity for the first time probably in my life in my adult life, and so I was just sick of looking at it, man. I, I was sick of looking at like this old faded you know, a couple of important memories. Like I had a one, one that I loved. There was one piece on my arm that I loved that I got, um, in Japan. But, uh, but yeah, it was just kind of, it was just gross and faded and old. And I've loved the black work thing since I saw it for the first time. Um, and my goal is not to just leave it at this. I'm, I'm up to like my bicep. I go back on July 2nd to do all the way up, up here and over oh, wow. my shoulder. And, how does it, how does it look? Ouch. Can you give us a little, <laughs> so it's like, okay. You know, it's like, how, how, how I'm, many I'm sessions does that take so far this for just, just one, one session? I, went, I, I did this in one sitting. Um, and so then I go up, I'll do my whole shoulder and like the, the it goes out of my chest a little bit and a little on my back and I'll just black that out. But after that, my plan is to add a sleeve of art of white ink over the like a like a piece mm. over top of white mm. ink. Um, this is also a very new style of tattooing. Yeah, there's only a few guys in the country that are like really crushing it and know the technique and do it properly. Um, but it you ha and, and you have to do it like five times. You got you got to do the white ink like five times. So it's it's a real commitment. But I have always felt that my arm was like not. Um, not a piece like that I was really super proud of. It was just kind of hodgepodge. Like, as I said, like I got most of it when I was so young. Um, and I just would like to have something, you know, that means a little bit more to me now at this point in my mm -hmm. life. And so, um, I I'm hoping to do like a really cool, uh, kind of, I, I love Japan. I go to Japan like three times a year. It's my favorite place on the planet. I'm hoping to do a cool, like line work piece of like, cherry blossoms and koi and just a really cool traditional kind of Japanese piece with the white ink. So yeah, we'll see, I, I'm a ways away from that. Like lo I got to get this second session done and let that heal up, but that, that's the plan. And, and, uh, yeah, I guess it makes me look pretty like pretty <laughs> tough, huh? pretty tough. I'm not, it's like not. next level tattooing. Really? I mean, it's, it's, there's so yeah. much more thought one that has to go into something that has to be done, you know, going with the white over the black over and over and over. That's just pretty intense. That's probably a very mental thing you have to, you have to go to a spiritual place to get to, you know, to yeah. get into the right mental place to, to go through the pain. I mean, obviously I've gotten tattooed. I know exactly what you're saying. I've, I have plenty of tattoos that I'm not proud of or that I'm like, eh, 
I really don't don't think I should have gotten that or something. You know, I've gotten a few yeah, things that, covered over, but I've I've never never thought about really seriously making the the commitment I mean, to the a, all black. It's, it's cool. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a plunge that you take for sure. And I, I it took me a long time to really say like, okay, can you do you want to do? You know, people are going to have opinions about it for sure. It's it's a dramatic thing mm -hmm. to see. It's so new that people are doing it. Um, do a lot of people but, like stop you on the street, whereas they wouldn't if you have regular tattoos? I, and yeah, I've definitely like, already got, and, and, and my artist, um, his name's Hood, and uh, he works out of Philly. He's like one of the mo most popular, uh, skilled black orc tattoo artists on the planet, really, and he, he's, he's in Philly. Um, and uh, so, I, I first of all, I was so lucky to like get his attention and get in and get an appointment and get him to be the one that did it because he's just so unbelievable at it. I mean, this is fully healed, dude. I mean, this is like done. That's and amazing. It looks like that's one pass, bro. It's crazy. How, how much um, does it hurt more than a regular tattoo or is no, it? No, dude, to be honest, I think part of the technique and, and uh, if we had him on the show, he could correct me. But uh, if I'm wrong, but part of the technique is like not like really digging in with it. It's like mm. such a fluid, even like the ink has to be distributed so evenly throughout the piece um, that he, first of all, he uses like a 12 gauge needle. So it's re it's like an inch and a half. I mean, it's really thick, the, the, the needle that he uses. And when you watch his arm, it's like, it's a different movement than you've ever seen someone tattooing you He's not swirling at all. He's not like, it's not line work. So it's not that it's like, it's all in the elbow and he just kind of he just sort of moves back and forth, like back and forth, back and forth. I mean, it still feels like you're getting tattooed right. and it sucks, but yeah, yeah. It, definitely, <laughs> it definitely was not something that was like overwhelmingly more painful than any other tattoo I've ever had. I mean, I honestly got up to my bicep and I was like, dude, do we just, do I just suck it up and sit here for another like three hours or whatever and just charge it and finish the whole thing right now? And he was like, don't do that. You don't, you don't want to do that. Just yeah. come back. He's like, you'll be, you'll be dead. If you, at the end, you know, or tomorrow. Yeah. Whatever. What was the healing like? Um, so I made the mistake of flying the, back home the next day. Ooh. Disaster, disaster. Uh, it healed amazing. So he wraps you up, wraps you up after the tattoo. You go to your hotel. Yep. Kind of so sleep, so yeah, <laughs> sleep with a, it wrapped, right? It was right? wrapped. I get the hotel. It was a lot. I mean, obviously it's a lot of ink. So it's, mm -hmm. there, so there was a lot of discharge. I mean, it was, it was, yeah. I realized like, holy shit, what am I going to do to fly? What, what am I going to do? It's probably leaking gonna, everywhere, gonna, right? It was rough. So I'm going back <laughs> in, in July. July 2nd is my next appointment. And I, I just, just, I'm staying for five days in Philly. So I'm, I'm going to stay, let it get to where it's peeling before I get on a plane again. Yeah. Because um, it was rough. I mean, I was just kind of sitting in the seat with my arm up for like all day. And then long story, which we don't need to get into the whole thing, but my flight got canceled when I landed in Atlanta connecting to Nashville and I had to go to a hotel on, on site. I didn't have any equipment. Like I didn't have any saran wrap or tape mm. or anything. Cause I was planning on getting home. So I had to take an Uber like a half hour away to the only Walgreens that was open and I was exhausted. I was miserable, dude. It was miserable. We're way worse than the tattoo was the trip home the right. next day. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to hole up in a hotel room with a, with a bunch of towels under, you know, under me and just, just relax for three three or four days after it this time before I try to fly again. Cause that was, it was a nightmare. But after that, it healed up perfect, man. Not a single scab anywhere, literally just, pe just peeled right off. So, um, I do like three, three night wrap for three nights overnight while you sleep a and D like real thin layer of a and D ointment during the day. And then on the fourth day, stop wrapping it and switch to just regular lotion mm -hmm. and it worked perfect. That's great. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, that's, that's the perfect plan for me. I'm not very artistic. Like I'm really bad at drawing. So if I was ever going to be a tattoo artist, I'll just be a, a black fill in <laughs> artist. <laughs> dude, dude. I mean, he, he loves it. He really loves it. Um, let me, let me, he figured out a great gig, you. man, whatever, whatever I it know, is, man. obviously he's great at what he does, but <laughs> I know. And you think about like the people that he, you know, he had to practice, let him like practice on them to get that technique down. I mean, that's just crazy. I'm trying to find this photo I have saved from the artist that, uh, I'm, I'm, talking to about going out. He's in Colorado to do the, the white. Let, let's see if this will focus for you. Hold on. Come on, buddy. There it there is. Focus. Oh, dude, that looks yeah, badass. See, so that's one pass. So that's one that pass, huh? Yeah. So that's fresh. You know, that's shot mm -hmm. like at the studio right after he did it. But and then it'll you just fade right out back in over the top of that white and you do it like four or five times. It'll never look like that, but it will be like a really, it'll be like a, almost white gray that really pops off the black. Like you'll, you'll definitely see the tattoo and, and it will be 
cool, super rad line work all over the black ink. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's for me. That's, that's the thing, you know, it's tattooing is like what feels right for you. And every time I look at one of those tattoos, I'm like, Oh, I want that so bad. And so I just decided to go for it. That's dope. I wonder if, if there's a technique where you, you go all black and then they use the laser removal to like <laughs> do a design the lines out. And that's scarification in a way, but, um, man, you can just go so many places. There's people like, you know, this guy I follow from Brazil on Instagram and he's got, he's got boar tes- tusks and his, his face is all tattooed black and his you know, yeah, yeah. everything, but like boar tusks. And I don't know what's something in his head, you know, something in there yep. face yep. is all tattooed. I mean, it's a life. It's, it's not necessarily for everybody. I get it, you know, no. but people, <laughs> people crazy. are so quick to judge other people for their decisions. Like, Hey, he, that guy, that's it's what he wants body, to man. do. <laughs> it's his body. He can do what he wants to it, you know? So awesome. Um, yeah, I'm excited to, to, to get it done. And it'll, you know, I'm thinking probably like mid year next year, I'm hoping to, it'll be finished by the time I go for all those sessions for the white stuff. Man, that's cool. Yeah. You having a plan gets it done because I don't have any plans and look, no new tattoos. It's like, right. <laughs> it's just yep. insane. But I heard like the price of tattoos are going up. Well, price of everything's kind of going up, but, yeah. um, it's kind of insane. You know, you gotta, you gotta get in line long yeah, lines. That's the problem I'm having is trying to get the appointments really to, to be honest. That's, that's the tricky thing. I'm talking to this, this, this dude in Colorado. He's like, man, I'm still figuring out I travel, you know, to conventions are all opening back up and all this stuff. He's like, I'm trying to figure out the last three months of the year, which is when I have any openings at all. And so I'm just, I'm hoping I can get in for at least one before the end of the year. And then I'm also, uh, talking to a guy, um, one sec, I don't want to mispronounce, uh, hold on. Almost there. Almost there. I hope you guys are watching on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul Marino. That's right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Paul is an artist in New Jersey who does crazy portrait work. Like, mm. you know, totally o- opposite of what's going on on my left arm. Sure. Um, and he actually ten he, he kind of is known for his Star Wars stuff that he does. <clears throat> and, um, he he's buds with uh, Adam Russell, the bassist of Story of the Year, who I do my Star Wars podcast that we had you on. Yeah. Uh, for, and so Adam's had a piece, a cover up done uh, by Paul, I believe, and so he connected me with him. And I'm also at the same time, I, I really just want to knock it all out. Uh, I'm trying to get my Star Wars sleeve finished as well, and there's a lot to do with that. Like I'm, it's also kind of old and fading because I never t- took the time to finish it, you know. And I got it when I was young, and I did. Some of it's really yeah. good, some of it's really crappy. Paul's like dude, we can fix all of it. We can make it all great. We can make it all pop. We just got to get going. So a lot of tattooing in my life this year, but I just want to get it done. And then that's it. I don't, I, I have no, like no legs. No, I'm not as hard as you. I can't get the neck. Dude. I, I can't do it. Uh, I can't do it. Well, I would say, you know, you're doing it right though. Just get as much done while you're yeah. still young. Get it over with. <laughs> it hurts more and more young, as you get older young-ish. every year. Young. Well, we're all youngish, aren't we? We're all young and yeah. dapperish. Yeah. Um, well, Let's talk about the podcast because I definitely wanted to ask you. I mean, is it still going? You know, still going yeah, strong. Man. Make uh, thank yeah, the maker. We're, we're, uh, yeah, the podcast is called Thank the Maker. It's a little nerdy Star Wars venture. I started with my nerdy Star Wars bud Adam Russell from Story of the Year, um, and you'll Mike, you appreciate this. Our other host is Nick Gambarian from Bayside. So I'm just I'm just surrounded by bassists at all times. Yeah, um, <laughs> love it. But, uh, but and yeah, the, I mean, and the premise is fun because I, I was on and I got to talk Star Wars and yeah, it's a lot of fun. It, it's yeah, just, we have a blast with it, man. You know, it's just it's the three of us being we're just friends talking about Star Wars and people really enjoy listening to it. And so um, I think one of the goals we had with the podcast that seems to be um, succeeding is not just Star Wars fandom, but fandom in general, even in, you know, band, band fandom, it can just be so toxic and so negative, especially with the, you know, the megaphone that is the internet now. And, um, so we really wanted to focus a lot with the show on, on putting some positive energy back into the fan base. And, and I, early on, we noticed people saying things like that in the reviews on Apple podcasts and stuff saying like, wow, this is so refreshing. Like, they, they understand that people don't like stuff, but they don't hate things and they like don't talk crap about it and they don't make me feel bad for liking something. That's the biggest thing. Right. Like, yeah, that's a big we've thing. We've noticed people coming out saying like, oh, so it's OK that I like the prequels or it's OK that I like the sequels. 
You know, of course it is, but our show is never going to make you feel bad for liking something. We, we, we're, we're here to encourage you to like Star Wars. The more Star Wars, the better, you know, we, we think. And so, um, we've had a blast with it. We've had some unbelievable guests on the show. Um, you know, doors just opening into the Star Wars world, like never before. Um, I mean, I email with like the publishing department straight at Lucasfilm now because they got turned on to the show and they were like, Hey, if you guys want to have our, some of our artists or, um, or, or authors for the novels and comic books and stuff on for, you know, for interviews, like we can connect that. And so it's really, it really just keeps growing and, and, uh, we're having a blast with it. So it's a, it's a we, new episode every Thursday. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so uh, just the star Wars thing there, there's constantly, like it was a perfect time to have a Star Wars podcast because there's constantly new stuff coming out. So you guys exactly. kind of can cover the new shows. The, do you even yep. cover? You cover kind of everything. Or what? What yeah, is it? So we don't really want to be like um like a review show. So we're kind of walking this line and trying to find our footing because we also mm. definitely do want to cover the new material as it comes out. You know. Um, but in a so different, we're, in we're, your own trying, way. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying not to be like a like a review or recap show. We're more kind of trying to take the the episode and actually dig into the themes of it and you know what it means for the the, the bigger picture of of the star wars universe mm. and stuff instead of just being like you know this is what happened on the show this week it's i, I don't know and and we don't again we try to keep it really positive so even if it's a, an episode uh right now we're, we're we're covering the bad batch you know because that's the that's the new animated series that's out right now even if there's an episode that wasn't didn't flip us out that much we're not going to come on and be like well that sucked we will come on and we'll find some Easter eggs and some cool stuff in there that make it worthwhile to, to talk about and mm -hmm. share with fans, you know, and show people maybe something they didn't see or catch when they watched it themselves. That's cool. So you got homework though. So you have to watch yep. almost everything, which I guess is not homework if it's something you love, but <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, it, it, watching, watching Star Wars a couple times a week uh, to get ready for the show is not a problem for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's cool. I, I mean, it's just, the theme of Star Wars is just, it, it is one of, I could think of five things in my life that I love and Star Wars is one of them, you know? So yeah, absolutely. it's just must hit people so hard, you know, with nostalgia and of course, you know, punk rock, you know, from you, you know, people that are fans of your bands and, and what you guys do as well as Star Wars kind yeah. of hits on well, both that, levels. That's, that's one of the things about the show that's blown me away, man, is we, we have, we had that initial groundswell of fans that we brought over from the band world that are fans of Star Wars as well. And mm -hmm. um, even if they weren't, maybe, you know, just wanted to check out what we were doing. But we really have, um, I hate to say left that world because those people are still with us, but we have sort Grown. of graduated okay. um, into the, the school of just Star Wars. I mean, we there, there are way more people listening to Thank the Maker every week that have no idea what our pasts are as members of bands than people who do know now. Um, way more just straight up Star Wars fans. And that was always our, our hope and our dream with the show is that we would start reaching, you know, Star Wars fans around the world. And, and we are, it's, yeah. been, it's been awesome. Yeah. That's dope. Right on. Let's, uh, so every Thursday, new episodes. Um, yes, sir. We'll just, we'll keep it, keep it rolling. Uh, new music. You've been, by the way, congratulations on Twitch. Thanks, man. So you're going to have to school me quite a bit on okay. Twitch. You know, I've only I done will. maybe a, an interview or two, you know, a few times. So, yeah. <laughs> man, so, so you just got, can you kind of explain how you got started on Twitch and what you just got a promotion or, or you got a job? Yeah. What is it? What is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's wild, man. And it's another one of these sort of like through the pandemic coming out the other side, you know, uh, it's, um, it's, I hate to be too excited about it in the face of all the tragedy and loss that the world has had to suffer in the last year. But I really used the time, uh, the whole time to just focus on improving myself and, and having some, you know, I mean, I, I couldn't travel, I couldn't tour. I didn't have a lot of people around me. It was a really, uh, it was, it was sort of a fork in the road where I could choose to be really bummed and, and, and upset that like, you know, my income was disrupted because I couldn't go tour or, didn't really know what I was going to do next, or I could choose the other way and, and use this time that I had to myself to like improve, you know? And, um, so I, I started exercising a lot again, I mean, every day. And I, I started meditating for the first time in my life and just started getting in the studio and turning on the rig and making music, man. Um, 
I've had a, a goal or dream, whatever you want to call it, for for many moons now to get into film and TV, scoring, composing music from home, not touring anymore. And this was sort of like, but I always had a tour because that's how I make a living. Doing mm-hmm. the composing for film and TV is mostly free stuff. Like, yeah, I'll try that. Let me try that. It's just so I can have stuff to show people. You do that for years before you get a real gig, you know? Um, and so I... I would, I still had to tour. Well, now I can't tour, right? So what do I do? Let's just start, let's just go make music, dude. Just make whatever, score whatever, do whatever. So I did that all year last year and, um, got, you know, became a better producer, I think became a better writer in that, in, in the style of music I'm, I'm trying to create and, and do. And, and also just all the kind of work I did on myself, um, helped me deal with a lot of the stuff that, you know, has happened in the past with the band and with my life and the mistakes I've made. And, um, just kind of like go into what I'm about to tell you with this opportunity I got with like this, this wide eyed gratefulness that I think I might not have had, you know, I don't know, even 10 years ago, maybe. Um, so yeah, I, I, I come out of the other side of, of, of the pandemic somewhat moving, uh, found myself, uh, moving into a new place in Nashville. Um, right before the pandemic hit, I left Nashville and moved back to Los Angeles where my sister, my niece and nephew, uh, my writing partner, Ryan Mendez, who was the lead guitarist in yellow card, uh, they all live there. So I went back out there to try to get this scoring thing going. And then the pandemic hit and lost the touring and freaked out to afford to live in California again. And I turned around and just came straight back. So um, I moved back to Nashville and I start start working on music again. And at the same time, my like social interaction with people throughout the pandemic was mostly gaming. I started playing Warzone with my buds late at night after work. And that was like how I hung out with people. I took the pandemic pretty seriously as I you know, hope most people did. I, I really wanted to uh, keep my parents safe. I, I kind of did a stopover between Los Angeles and Nashville in, in my hometown in Florida, in Jacksonville, um, kind of figuring out what was next and what I was going to do because uh, losing the touring and the future being so uncertain. Um, so I, I stayed in a, I had a little rental place in, in Jacksonville that was very close to my parents. So uh, I didn't want to get my parents sick. You know, I, I, I really, really kind of did the quarantine thing. So my way of interacting with my friends was to play video games online, you know, um, and I'm 41 year old man child, you know, yeah. so that's me. <laughs> um, so, so about three months ago, um, a couple of buds of mine were, uh, had already been streaming video games on Twitch. So Twitch is, uh, for those of you that don't know, it's a live streaming platform that really was founded around gamers streaming while mm-hmm. they play video games. So were you streaming um, on Twitch before you were, before the pandemic? at all. No, so you, no. so so you, so you started like, just gaming straight up, not streaming your gaming, right? talking right. to your and friends. So, so like three, it's funny, actually, I did make an account just because I have, I have one friend in California who likes to smoke some bud and watch me play games. So I, made, <laughs> I literally made like a shadow account that no one knew and I wasn't like promoting it. Like, Hey yeah. guys, I'm streaming. And I would just text him and be like, Hey dude, I'm, if you want to watch, he's like, yes, I want to watch. So I would just stream <laughs> only for my one really, really good friend, uh, which was kind of awesome. But I, um, so, so in like three months ago, I guess now three, maybe three and a half months, something like that. I'm, I'm, I made, I'm, I'm here in my new place in Nashville. I made an account with that's like a William Ryan key Twitch channel, but I was just going to game with my buds. I figured, you know, no one, no one gives a crap about watching me play video games. I'm not even very good at it. Uh, but if you want to come watch us and laugh, cause we're, it's a fun hang when we're all on, I figured some people would be into that. So, um, so I started the channel, started gaming. Um, it was fun building a little community, but you know, it was like 25 people watching while I did it. It was like, just not going to be a thing. Um, but it was sort of like a, I'm already doing this anyways. I might as well stream it out, you know? Mm. And then at some point shortly after I started doing it, my manager is in a conversation with the the guys at Twitch. So fast here, I'll catch you up on this. Twitch is really trying to expand from gaming. So mm-hmm. they're having a lot of people doing a lot of different things on the platform and they almost have like A&R teams out now trying to find artists and creators to bring onto the platform. So Music is a huge thing they're trying to do. Twitch, the music streams on Twitch. Mike Shinoda is, uh, excuse me, I'm drinking bubbly water. No worries. Yeah, Mike Uh, Mike Shinoda Shinoda from Lincoln Park. Is Yeah, from Lincoln Park is really active on the platform. Um, um, Matt Heafy is a a super, super active streamer um, that that kills it on the music side. And so Andy, my manager, is talking uh, to them about um, some of the guys in Of Mice and Men that he manages as well doing some streaming stuff. And they said, Hey, we noticed that Ryan is on the platform now. 
we think that's really cool. Would you be interested in talking about some contractual stuff to do music on the on the platform? Yeah. And he was like, well, yeah, what, what do you got? And it turns out it's like a it's a full time gig, dude. And they were super stoked on me being on there. And um, and I told them kind of what I was about, what I was trying to do with my music and stuff. And they were like, we think that sounds amazing. And um, so what I'm doing on Twitch is pretty different than what anyone else has done yet. As far as there are people doing music production streams on Twitch. Um, so basically I just stream my Pro Tools rig out and, and everybody can just watch everything I do. Mm. Um, so I'm working on a few <clears throat> different projects right now and I just get to record live on Twitch. It's really, really, and chat with people the whole time. Um, and, and most people that are, I find that are doing production streams are doing sort of like Twitch only production streams, if that makes sense. Like mm. they're doing it just kind of fun with chat. Like, hey, you guys send me the lyrics and I'll try the lyrics out. Or do you think I should do this piano part or that piano sure. part? Or you guys send me a piano part. I'll put it in the song. Whereas what I'm doing is like functional, you know, release. Like it's this gonna is music be... for wide release. Sure. Um, so, so it is a kind of a new thing that not a lot of other people are doing on the platform, which I think is cool. And I hope starts to be something that more people do so that, you know, people who are interested in audio and production and writing can come to Twitch for like a, a real kind of functional purpose of like, I want to see the process and I want to learn, you know, how these guys that, that I listen to or, um, you know, take inspiration from do, do their work. So I just started, I'm in week three right now. Um, but I've gone from like, I don't know that when I started it and was gaming like eight, eight or 900 people followers to 2,500 followers in two and a half weeks. So, um, a lot of people wow. have come over to the channel and I think found, found me on, on, on the platform and we're having fun, man. It's just a rad little community. You know, you have the discord server where I get to chat with everybody. Even when I'm not streaming, I kind of tune in and talk to fans really one-on-one. -on -one. It's just got this cool personal touch that doesn't feel like social media. It, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like self-promotion. It feels like engagement. Yeah. It feels like connection in, in a way that I haven't found on social media before. It would have been amazing to have that resource when I was learning how to record, when I was learning how to yeah. use Pro Tools, any of that kind For of sure. stuff back in the day, you know, because I that's how I learned. I, I would watch Jerry Finn. I would ask him questions. I would, you know, uh, but but to have this and then you, can you replay the, the Twitch streams or when they're live, they're done or do they post to your page, your Twitch page? You, you can do it however you, you Oh, you just choose. OK, as long as you're not. Um, using any copyright protected music in the stream. Yeah. Um, which I was originally like, I, I had a nice little playlist that I curated for like when I'm on break or when the, when the stream's starting, I would have that music playing, but I've stopped doing that. And I just put my own music up because the, anything I've, all the music I've done after yellow card is mine. Like mm -hmm. I own the masters for it so I can just use it for whatever I want. Um, like if someone was going to get mad about copyright, it would be me. So it's fine. Yeah. Right. Um, I know. <laughs> so, you so probably I, still I, get flagged on YouTube now and again for your own probably, stuff. Like, yeah, probably. I got to approve but I, my own thing. Dude, speaking of that, you know, it, it is interesting. Part of part of the contract with Twitch is like, um, it, it's that I'm not a, I'm I'm not allowed under contract to live stream on any other platform. So like, I can't okay. I can't go on live on Inst I can't do an Instagram live sure. session. Like, I'm not allowed to do that anymore, which is kind of wild. But it's kind of wild. Um, but it's I mean, if it makes sense. Though. Question though, if if does that go into your music like I say if you were playing a show and they were going to live stream that is that a different kind of thing or is that in, I don't know I don't know maybe that's, that's a probably kind of a gray area some gray that area technically would be a music stream you know mm -hmm. so I don't I don't know but a you different setup there. a different looking setup yeah and it and a lot of those things that bands are doing now and have done through the pandemic are ticketed which kind of counts as like a pay-per-view sort mm -hmm. of it's not the same thing as twitch where you know um, again, for anybody listening that doesn't know what Twitch is or doesn't have a Twitch account, I mean, I would love to see you. And if you're interested in audio at all, come hang with me. It's really fun. And the music I'm doing um, is definitely not, probably not what you would expect to get out of, of me if, if all you know of me is Yellow Card. I mean, I'm doing like ambient electronica, like neoclassical crossover soundtrack stuff. It's a, it's a really a new realm. And it's, I, I think it's, it's, um, I don't know. I think people are ever having fun watching. Uh, that kind of music be made because it's just it's it's just it's so much more expansive than just like here's how I track a guitar and here's how you mic a snare drum. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm getting endless sounds and crafting them and tweaking them and you know so. Um, but yeah, I was saying that that that's a like a pay per view. Whereas you don't need to even have a Twitch account to watch my stream. Like you you can just go to Twitch TV slash William Ryan Key, which is my channel, and just watch it. And that's, I think, what they're what they're saying when they're like, you can't 
you can't live stream out something that just anybody can watch right. anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I think a ticketed event or something like that probably falls under a different category. That's great that you got you're with Twitch now. Um, do you also okay? So you're allowed to repost your streams on your social mm-hmm. media because I've seen yes. it on your Instagram and, and right. it looks they get great. Right when I'm done. Okay, okay. cool, cool. That looks really cool, and, and it and it it makes it look like you have like a production team, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> because you've got this really cool video that you're you know you're talking to people and you can see the everything you're doing on the on Pro Tools or whatever it is on your keyboard, uh, but then it goes on to your. Instagram on your video. It just looks, it looks good. I like what you're doing with that. Uh, I want to know about some of the songs, some of the music like production that you're, you're getting into because, you know, listening back to, you know, your first EP, you know, you put out that song vultures, uh, great, great song, by the way, really cool, really cool sound. Um, it lends itself to experimentation. I feel like some of this, Mm -hmm. some of the styles that you're going into. So what's, what led you to that? Just, straight up I'm ready for something else or was it being inspired by just the fact that you have all this technology in front of you? What, what was the main thing that makes you want to dive into all this production? Probably, probably a little bit of all of it, man. But I will say that for, for a long time, even, even long before the end of, of yellow card, like my palette of, of listening, like the music I was really drawn to was, was so far removed from what we were as a band, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would say that like a, a real gateway drug of a band for me was Explosions in the Sky. Um, when I heard the first explo- m- my first Explosions in the Sky experience was probably all the way back in 2005. So it's been they've been in my life for a long, long time. Um, but over time, as they kept releasing albums, I just found myself so drawn to instrumental music more than than lyric driven music. So uh, I sort of like you know, down the playlist rabbit holes of those types of bands. I found so many other artists that I loved. And, um, and so when I went to make my own music after yellow card, I was just like jonesing to do something different. You know, I was, I was, I was just dying to create something that was, came from these other inspirations I had in my life for, for so long. So kind of doing this whole like Elliot Smith meets explosions in the sky vibe Mm -hmm. is where I started. And then over time, even that has just evolved even more and more. Um, into what I'm doing now, which is, you know, if I had it my way, I, I would, I would never sing a lyric again. I think <laughs> if I had it my way, uh, I'm just, why the instrumental? Why stuff. is I that? Don't know. I don't know. I just, i just love creating instrumental pieces. I, I, I just love it. It's, you know, it's like what I feel passionate and driven to do. Like when I'm creating it, I'm like, I'm just so into it. And, and I'm not, I'm not sitting there trying to think about like, what story in my life I want to translate into lyrics for, for people or like mm-hmm. it, it, I'm totally operating off feel, you know, and like a totally different kind of emotion than trying to like put it into words is just using the music to convey the emotion. And, uh, I, I don't know, I'm really getting off on that some, somehow lately. So feels like there's a lot um, of freedom in that for you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And as you said, the technology, you know, the tools that I have access to, to create sounds and, and, you know, do strings and orchestras and all, all the stuff I can do that it just continually year after year, it gets better and better and better and sounds more and more realistic. And it's just, uh, the tools as I call them, they just keep improving. And so that part of it's really fun, learning new technologies, learning new instruments, um, learn new software instruments. But, Mm -hmm. um, I, I've also, man, I've been really, really into electronic music for a long time now too. Um, you know, I think EDM can be sort of a loaded word because people immediately think of like Calvin Harris and, you know, David Guetta, Vegas parties, you know, and nothing against that. If you're into that, that's, I mean, that those dudes write insanely massive hit music, you know? Yeah. Um, but when I say EDM, uh, the stuff I love and listen to falls much more into that sort of almost atmospheric, like post rock kind of world where it's, it's not post rock because it's not guitar driven or drums, you know, uh, drum driven like that. But it's like, it, it has that kind of kick drum, you know, tempo has that dance element to it, but it's all so, um, atmospheric and ambient and, and orchestral. And I, I just, I've been, I've gravitated to artists, um, that create that, that kind of electronic music for many, many years. And, uh, so one of the projects I'm working on right now, um, is, uh, a new thing I'm doing with Ryan Mendez from yellow card. Uh, so we have a new project called Jetta. 
cool. Um, and we've been working on it for almost four years. And uh, J E D the J E D H A. And uh, it was our thing of like, okay, yellow cards done. We can do whatever we want. What would it be like for us to try and make one of these songs? What what would, what, what would we come up with if we tried to make an electronic composition that's like six minutes long and has all these crazy builds and drops and movements and stuff. So we, we recorded our first song, like I said, almost four years ago now. Um, and we just released it to the world kind of coinciding with the Twitch stream. So we kind of, we, on Mondays, Ryan and I work together on my channel on, on our record. So we're, we're trying to oh, actually cool. finish, finish our record finally. Um, so we're producing the Jetta album live every Monday together. So you can just watch us make the record, which is really, really cool. I think, um, and so we premiered all the music we've made up to date to everyone on our fir my first stream, which was two weeks ago, last Monday, uh, this past Monday, two weeks ago. So, um, and, and then we dropped that first song, which is called Dividing Pair. So you can like listen, the, the only place you can listen to it right now is on, um, uh, I get, well, I guess you can watch it on the Jetta YouTube, but we're not like pushing it super hard yet. You know what I mean? We just You're still working sort of, on like, it. Yeah. Yeah, we just wanted to kind of throw it out. Hey, we have this thing we've been working on. You know, we still don't know what it is or where it's going, what it's for. Um, but it is a project with a name that's going to have an album that we, you know, we're scoring uh, under the name. We scored our first movie last summer, um, which is a tiny little independent film we got through a friend of mine. So that was a huge, amazing learning experience for us to get to score a full length feature. Was it hard? Um, <laughs> no, dude. It no? was so cool. It was, I, it what was, was the process like? What do you, where do you start with something like so, scoring a movie? Yeah. So like, as I said, it's something I've been dreaming about making, a, you know, turning into a reality for like a full time thing to, to be composing and scoring film TV for so long that to finally get a, a, a chance to do it. Um, for like a project was just, it was, it was awesome and it was so exciting. But I'll tell you that when we opened the Pro Tools session on the very first day and I dropped the video file in, you know, you just drag and drop and it makes a video track mm -hmm. and you go into the scene and like you, you, there it is. Like you, the, you operate the film the same way you operate an audio track. You just move around, you look for cues, you know, and you make markers. So like, we, we broke down the first scene. We kind of broke it down into sections. Like this is the start of this conversation. This is where this look happens. This is where, and we made markers and pro tools and started scoring. And dude, it was like, it was like an out of body thing as far as like, I, I, I stepped back and like looked at like, wow, you're doing the thing that you like dreamed about doing. You're finally actually doing it. And this is what I want to do. Like, this is definitely where I want to be musically, this is this is the kind of stuff I want to be doing. I knew it just on the first day. So the rest of it was just a blast. It was just super fun to get to score a movie. I can't even explain it any differently. It wow. was so, so freaking fun, man. That sounds fun. I mean, did are you going to do that, you think, on your Twitch at some point mm -hmm. when you get the right it project? I, 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 well, I probably won't be allowed to do stuff right. like that from the projects, you know, but things uh you know i'm sure you could be score your own short film things maybe. have already come out and i can probably get like license from whoever to break do do a breakdown of a track or a scene kind mm. of talk about like this is how we made you know people do yeah. that all the time yeah yeah for films uh, composers get to kind of show how they wrote and recorded a scene so i'm sure after things come out we'll be able to um under the jetta thing ryan and i actually booked uh, this is the biggest news really in my uh i don't know in my career other than this post yellow card anyways so other than this twitch thing um we we got hired to score uh, uh the first season of a new show for disney um and wow it's congrats not, thanks man we i don't know when it's starting we're still like waiting on all the legal stuff that goes way 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 before any of the music does you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but the project has a green light and we have been hired to do the music so that'll be the first real kind of you know, our little Jetta project stepping onto the stage sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so we're hoping to start scoring that by the end of the year, but you know, yeah, there's no way that I'm going to be like, Hey Disney, can I score this live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> so, no, man, that's not going to happen, but we're excited, man. So that's, that's one thing I'm working on, on Twitch. Um, uh, just keeping with, you know, you kind of ask about music that's going on. I'm doing another thing where, um, I'm taking all these old yellow card songs and stripping them down and, and doing these like super, super, uh, mellow ambient kind of sleepy versions of them. Yeah. I've checked and, some of that. It sounds great. And I ended up teaming. Thanks dude. I, I ended up teaming up with, um, it from that explosions in the sky, sort of world of music, another kind of godfathers of post-rock type band called hammock. They're from here in Nashville. 
Um, and, uh, we connected on like a, like a tweet thing, you know, like I tweeted something about like listening to a record. They replied that it turned into like you direct messaging. You live in Tennessee. I live in Tennessee. Let's grab lunch. So we became buds and, um, they, they do like really ambient cool, like every, every ambient or like sleep sound pod, uh, playlist on mm -hmm. Spotify has a hammock song on it. <laughs> really? They, they all I'm going to have to write that. So out. <laughs> what I'm doing is playing piano tracking vocals, doing some strings on a, on a yellow card song. I take the key way down, you know? So it's like, I mean, I'm singing like I'm talking basically okay. like super, super chill, super the mellow. Key. And then I send that kind of piano vocal string thing over to hammock and they produce them into these massive wall of sound hammock songs. And the end result is going to be a 10 song album that we're going to do vinyl for release together. It'll be hammock and William Ryan key. And, uh, and it'll be all these reimagined yellow card songs that I'm doing with hammock, which is just so wild and weird but it's cool i'm just you know i'm just trying to keep making music man it's like yeah whatever i can do to keep doing it and then i'm releasing an ep an, a third ep later this year so i'm working on that on twitch as well right on that's cool yeah you so you have two out now and they they both sound slightly different but you can see a progression so is yeah, is the I'm, third gonna be it'll, it'll be the next level yeah yeah you can you can tell i mean i'm, I'm working on on the sort of the last piece of the ep uh for on Twitch, uh, like every couple of times a week. And, um, a lot of times I'll, I'll chill in the, in the Twitch stream and take a break and just play everyone, the other songs from the EP. That's one of the things that's cool about Twitch. It's like in this day and age, dude, you know how people, what, what's a release anymore? Like who cares? You know, like, I mean, half the time, if someone's releasing an album, the digital version that's coming out, like you have like six of the 10 songs before the album even comes out anyways, you know, it's yeah. like every three weeks, here's another single from the new, it's not <laughs> singles. It's just, so what's the point, right? So I'm just sharing it with everybody. Like, hey, you guys want to listen to it again? I, we've probably listened to the EP like four times already because the, in chat, they're like, play it again, play it again, <laughs> which is a good sign, you know? Um, play it again. I'm, so, my yeah. recorder's ready. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on like the last, so that I have five tracks for the EP and, and I'll that'll come out. That'll be the first thing out of all of this crap we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um that will be the first thing that actually comes out to the world. Probably will be my, my third like solo EP be out okay. in the fall or winter. Awesome. Awesome. We'll look for that in the fall. Um, you know, one of the things I loved about like watching like videos of people producing, I, I used to watch or used to watch, I've watched this old Kanye West video of him, like mm -hmm. producing one of his songs. And he was like telling the engineer, like do this, do this. And he was on the keyboard or the sampler or whatever. And I was just like, I didn't really understand what was going on, you know, cause they're not explaining anything. They're just doing it. But mm -hmm. that to me is exactly what you're kind of describing you, you on Twitch, except for the fact that you're actually explaining a little bit more what exactly. you're doing. You're, you're, it's, it's such a cool thing that I, I'm, I'm kind of having trouble wrapping my mind around <laughs> I know man. because it's so different from the way we used to do things, you know, and, and I'm even today, I, most of the work I do is in secret. So like mm -hmm. having that that switch, whatever it is that you're just, you can work and create while people are watching. I was worried about it. That's cool. Like, yeah, I was, it, I was worried about like what that would feel like, you know, does what's, it change what's it, it? Gonna be like with people watching it? It hasn't phased me, man. It's, it's been, um, I think it helps keep a little bit of pressure off myself. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't get in my head too much about like, is this good? They already hear it. So it's, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just make it. And, and, um, okay. I think, as you said, explaining as I go has been really cool for people. I, cause I do, I say, you know, this is what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm going through, you know, th I'm not a great piano player. So check out how I make piano tracks sound like I'm a great piano player mm. using the tools that I have, you know, and I'm, I'm just showing everybody how I do, um, all, all the stuff that I do in my sessions and the audio people in this, you know, that are watching the stream are, are, uh, I can tell they're really, really into that aspect of it. Um, and, and everybody else is, it's just, like I said, there's this community of support on Twitch that's unlike any other social media platform I've found. I'm not a big fan of social media to begin with. Um, so having a sort of a form of it that I actually enjoy is really refreshing. Yeah, that's good. So how, what, what, what's the tech end like for you? Um, what was the learning curve like mm -hmm. as an operator of your Twitch yep. stream and all the things that you have to like hook up into it? How hard was that? That setup. You've got a nice microphone there, a little SM7. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it took 
a lot of trial and error, dude, a lot. I mean, there's the basic elements you got to get to do a stream, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with, with pro tools and all the audio that takes it to, you know, that adds a whole, you're not just streaming your video game out with a mic. It's, it's a lot of trial and error, uh, to get what you need to be going where you need it to go. Um, a, even, you know, an, an added element of kind of trickiness for mine is working with Ryan on Monday is we already work remotely. He's in Goleta, California and I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. So we have a system where we do a zoom call for video to see each other so that I can also share my screen with him and he can control the Pro Tools rig from Galita. Um, nice. But within that, in Pro Tools, there, there we have different pro- plugins and things that route the audio so that he hears what he needs to hear. And, you know, the mic, like the thing he's hearing me talk through uh, will like automatically close when I press play. So he's not hearing any, you know, slap back through the mic and all those kind of things. So on the Monday stream, it was like, like what how are we going to get all Ryan to hear his ver- his stream of what I'm doing but then like Twitch to hear that stream and hear Ryan and it it was just it was a lot yeah um but I had a lot of a lot of you know good good buds that are audio whizzes help me along the way Ryan himself he's he's I learned most of what I know from my friend who played guitar in the band for 20 years he's like um or 15 years I guess but uh so I, I learn a lot from him and, and he helps me set most of this stuff up. But I also have um, a friend that um, my friend Mara that Twitch connected me with who is just like um, all things Twitch genius. She she runs the whole channel. So when you're watching the stream, she's there full time. All the alerts, all the cool like X-Wing, Star Wars explosions and and like graphic animation and all the stuff that's happening during the stream. She's running all that behind the scenes while I'm while I'm streaming. Uh, so that's very, very helpful. But I've also had the learning curve of, of like directing the stream on my own, you know, so Mm -hmm. you have these little Elgato stream decks in front of you that give you your different scenes and, and you're, it's like, you're almost, um, you're almost like playing them like an instrument, you know what I mean? So while you're doing the stream, I'm like playing sound effects and I'm switching between the chat scene and the pro tool scene. And that's all, it's all just a learning curve. And for me, mostly I'm just impressed that when I turn it on, it all works. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm That's just like, like yes. That cool. kind of reminds me of like being a modern D like a modern version of an old school DJ with all the sound effects and the, the, yeah. Yeah, the sample board, but that that's gotta be hard. I mean, how long did it take you to get good at hitting all the, the things you need to hit? Well, I had the practice of doing the, the scene transitions and stuff kind of, I didn't know it, but when I was doing the gaming stuff for a couple mm-hmm. months, it was like a practice run, you know, yeah, it was really yeah. great because I was doing the same thing. I just wasn't, uh, I wasn't working, but as far as just like, you know, in between when I was gaming, like if I went to the menu screen, I would, I would get in the habit of switching to like the chat so that it was just a big camera of me instead of the game video game menu, mm-hmm. you know, little things like that to kind of keep it interactive and stuff. And so I've learned to transfer that to the music stream where I'm, you know, taking little breaks. I'll always go to a chat screen where everybody can see the chat that they're typing in real big and any kind of like alerts and subscription notifications and all that stuff are real big on the screen. And, um, it's, it's a crazy dude. It's a crazy learning curve for sure. (laughs) My my friend Mara, my new friend Mara, she's like my main moderator. She has taught me everything and she's just been amazing. Um, super grateful to her. She's, she's taught me what Twitch is and how it works. That's cool. Shout out to Mara. That's cool. Yeah. She, if you're in the chat and if you listen to the, the, to, to uh, Mike's pod and end up coming to hang in the chat, her name is fading ink. So give her a little virtual hug for all the hard work she does. That's awesome. Before we get going, I wanted to ask you what the heck is, uh, what is it called? I had it written down here. Let me find it. Cardio sport. Uh, it's a war, it's a warp tour thing. Um, the Kevin, Kevin Lyman, warp, warped founder owner brought, yeah. uh, some, a bunch of artists together with this fitness uh, a company called cardio sport and the appeal of it and why we were all brought into it is that they they're fans and they built the whole program on like emo and pop punk and met and like metal and rock, like warp tour rock music is like what their workout programs are built around um and so i think they through you know through looking for production and promotion marketing companies they found kevin and kevin's company and and through the warp tour and stuff and so he just brought it to artists and we've kind of just been tasked with like sharing it with the world in i mean in in a bit of a sort of uh it's a cringy word but you know an influencer type way of sort of like saying hey check out this workout program because we think you'll like it and um 
And I, I mean, I think people will like it's uh, it's it's totally it's a totally different type. It's it's all kind of geared around uh, around sports. Like um, and when when I say that, I mean, like they use soccer balls and cones and and footballs and stuff to like mm. do interactive exercise instead of just going to the gym and, and lifting or having a personal trainer screaming at you. And the whole time you're doing it, it's to like all time low and newfound glory and fallout boy and yellow card and everything else. So, um, it's just kind of a cool concept really. To be yeah. Honest. I thought it was a cool concept. I was like, Oh, that's, that's cool. Cause there's a lot of different workout program. I mean, there's so many different workout programs. So yep. it makes sense to have a little pop punk version of yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's a workout program for, for the warped kids. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I do. I'm old school. I still go to the gym, but, uh, I've been going, you know, the time I go is a little shrink, you know, it's a little less cause I'm doing more cardio outside of the gym. So I, I too am evolving, Ryan. Like right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, last year I did, man, I, I dug up an old program it's been around for years. Um, but it, it was, it worked, man. I, the, I moved again in, in December to get up here to Nashville and I can't believe it's June and I've really been out of my routine. The move really threw me out of the routine and I, I've been lazy and not gotten back into it. But last year I was hitting it hard, like from May to November, probably harder than I have in years. And uh, I was just doing that old beach body workout T25, which is Sean T, the guy who did uh, Insanity. Oh, um, insanity. Yeah, I've done insanity. Yeah, yeah of course. So it's like a 25 <laughs> minute version of insanity. And, nice. I, and and that's perfect for me, man. Half hour in and out, do it at home. Yeah. Super intense flop sweat, you know, like it, it was, it was good for me. And it, and it, I mean, I, was, I got, got pretty shredded. It's it was, about that. Nice. It's about the routine <laughs> for me. Like it's, it's yeah, not even, same. yeah. It's like if I go consistently every day, then it's going to work. It's going to work. I know. But I if, know. and I, I, it's also just for me, it's been like, trying to get work sorted, figure out what the next thing is, is a constant battle for me since it's not a battle. It's an opportunity. The fact that I'm looking for the next thing, but still making music all along the way battle is the wrong word. Yeah. Um, yeah. But finding that thing post yellow card, I mean, that's been what I've been doing. I've, I've been doing that for three years straight now, you know, uh, three and a half years. And so, um, exercising is like, I'll get in the zone, but then something new will come along that I have to put a lot of energy into. And I, I'm not a morning person. So that makes it challenging. I'm a vampire for sure. And that makes it challenging for me because if you're going to get it done, you got to get it done in the morning. So, um, yeah, there was a I time mean, I was working at nights, working out at nights. Yeah. I, and I, it was rough. I've done that too. I've gone through <laughs> phases where I've done that. But for yeah. me, it's like now that I've got this, this Twitch thing is happening. It's locked in. I'm really enjoying it. It's got longevity. I mean, it's a, it's, uh, you know, it's something I'm going to be doing for many months to come now, uh, with working directly with them. And so it's like, I feel like now that I have that routine sort of settled and that peace of mind mm -hmm. with work, I can really try to turn around and get focused on, uh, on my fitness again. Yeah. You, the cool thing about Twitch is the fact that you're working cause you're getting get paid from Twitch, but yep. you're actually working on other things as well. I know at the same. So it's like double work. And that I know, and that's that's one of the things that when the whole idea was brought to me, and I started talking with uh, with Fred and Will at Twitch, who were like the the kind of you know head of A and R sort of at, at the music department at Twitch, and they were like, dude, that's exactly what we want. That's what we think. It's so cool. We don't really have anybody else doing that. So the fact that you're giving a window into your your projects that you're actually creating for release is is a new concept. It's really rad. And and yeah, man. I mean, I don't know where any of these projects are going to go, but you know, just from, we are trying to make a living here, right? Making music. Like I do it because I'm creatively passionate about it, but it also is how I pay my bills. So if one of these, if I get to double dip on one of these and one of them turns into a big opportunity that, you know, I was also getting paid to work on Twitch. Like that's just amazing. That's the, it's like, yeah. what is, what is the, what is this life? You know, it's crazy. So, um, you I'm put really in the work, excited. you get, you get more work out of it, you know? I, yeah. Yeah. And that's what kind of what we started when we started talking today about last year when I was talking about just kind of like focusing on myself and my mental health and, and it, breaking it down, you know, like, how'd you get here, man? And what, what really, what are the steps you took and what steps do you want to take now to improve and, and, and build on, on your, the lessons you've learned. And mm -hmm. one of them really t seems to be getting out what you, what I put in, you know, and like staying positive, finding new opportunities that I'm excited about and not, not getting down about, you know, not like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't, what I can't tour anymore because the pandemic. Well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm screwed. You know, yeah. like that's an easy mentality to take. And, um, I, I, it's not been often in my life that I've 
uh, I think made such a deliberate decision to be po- to be positive about about life in general and just like stay focused and um, you know it's better late than never. Yeah, you're right, I, and you've come so far, you know, over the years. I, I d- almost don't even want to bring this up, but it, I had Ben Harper on the podcast a while back, and he was telling his side of the story about getting kicked out of Yellow Card, and. I felt bad because you weren't there to really respond to that. And, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to give you a second to respond to that because obviously we've all moved on from, from a lot of those experiences and learned a lot from our, our past experiences, but I still want just for the listeners to be able to hear a little bit of your side of, of that story. I'm happy to say something really simple, just about like, look, there's two sides to every story and I'm not going to engage in any kind of back and forth, like, conversation or, or finger pointing, I'll put what I, you know, I'll take responsibility for my own actions and tell you that, you know, at that time I didn't have a lot of good tools to deal with a lot of the stress and anxiety that was happening around the band. But I I can tell you that it was a unanimous decision for anyone who was ever not in the band anymore to not be in the band. So it, putting it all on me is unfortunate, but it comes with my position, my role, I guess. And, uh, you know, I made my own, a lot of mistakes back then, but you know, nobody ever asked me to leave the band. So it is what it is. You know, I'm happy to just kind of like tie it off like that and leave it there. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. You know, you've always been a good guy to me. Uh, Things do get crazy when you're on tours with a bunch of people that are, have different ideas and different opinions about life. And then you take a bunch of years later and, and memories are hazy. So Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And uh, you know, I honestly, I, I didn't, I didn't really know what had happened. And so when he was telling me the story, all I could do was just be like, okay, you know, like, (laughs) sure. Um, but, uh, I think a lot, I think a lot of the reason that, that some of those stories, at least from the, the, those of us that, that, you know, were in the band after that didn't come out and never really came out is, um, and I'm sure this would be disputed by, by the other side of the story, but it, it, it was honestly, uh, out of out of respect and out of the interest of the other parties to not want to talk about these experiences or you know these negative in, in interactions or the reasons why these things had to had to go down the way they did um and i still kind of stand by that it's yeah like it's not really anyone's business and if you feel that way that you were wrong it's your right to go out and tell your story that's fine I, again i'm not going to engage in some type of you know back and forth yeah um, yeah no, I think, I think, I think you got it. You, you have the right attitude and I just, I respect everything you said. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. And I hate being so negative. I hate having to think, you know, think about the, the bad things that have happened in our lives. But, uh, I, you know, you, you're in a good place now and, uh, you got so much to look forward to new music coming. Um, I think, People that people that really want to want to make things happen, they'll just do it, you know, and there's a lot less yep. talk involved and there's more action. And it's obvious you've been very, very active in creating and making your life better. And uh, all the respect, all the respect I for that. I appreciate it, man. You know, that that's a good lesson, I think, though, that I've taken and learned. Whereas back one of the reasons that, you know, or, or perhaps one of the reasons that Yellow Card was able to succeed is, and, and not just, not just my ambition, but, uh, my, my contribution, you know, my ambition being contributed to the whole, uh, back then there may have been a bit of that like hyper ambition, you know, where the, the peripheral vision's kind of off and people around you that are trying to take care of you or do right by you, uh, you know, don't get a, a, the appreciation they deserve because you're just on this mission to, mm-hmm. to get it done. You're just, straight ahead. And now at this point in my life, as you said, yeah, I'm, I'm hustling really hard to, to keep going and keep making music. But I have this sense of awareness now that it's not all about me. I can't do this without people like my manager, Andy, like Mike Mara, that's helping me with Twitch. Um, like the guys at Twitch who have given me this opportunity, you know, making sure that those people are encouraged and, and appreciated by you only makes everything work better. Should I have been that way all along? 100%. But again, I just take it back to the fact that I, I can admit that I wasn't really well equipped for, for whatever many reasons that may be of my childhood and my upbringing and my circumstance or whatever it is that caused my attitude to be the way it was at times. 
Um, I just feel that, you know, at that young age with that much going on, I, I didn't deal with a lot of it properly. Um, and I, and I did get lost in that kind of like super ambitious, like I'm going to make it, you know? Uh, and, but, but I think I still have that attitude of I'm, I'm going to make it, <laughs> but, um, I'm able to, to see the bigger picture of like the, the, you know, the people that are important to me in my life and, um, and, and just understanding that, that that's just as important as the work, you know? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Um, is there any, any tell people one more time where they can find you on Twitch, um, where they can find your music. I also wanted to say too, that, you know, with, um, just speaking of staying positive, like you and I are not that far apart in age. You're you're a little bit older than me, but not, but we're in the same, we live in the same league, you know, of midlife, and, uh, <laughs> I'm sitting here on your podcast, dude. And, you know, I was, I saw MXPX play at every little dive milk bar show you ever did in Jacksonville, Florida, when I was in high school. Um, you know, and I think the connections we've made with, with each other, with other artists and stuff throughout our career, like for you and I to circle back and have this hang here today. I mean, that's just crazy if you really think about it. I mean, like I, I wanted to be in a band like MXPX, even though I was only a couple years behind you back then. But seeing you play shows was like, yes, that I want to achieve that. I want to do that, you know. So in so many ways, like your band was such a big inspiration to me and my friends who were all, you know, trying to start bands in Jacksonville at that time and stuff and leave, you know, get out of high school, get on the road and do all that stuff. It's like what you guys did. It was a roadmap for what to do. And um, so I just yeah, I mean, that's that's every little thing now. I'm, I'm, as, as I said, I'm just trying to sort of like really appreciate each, each encounter, each thing that's happening. And it's like, here I am just chilling with my career. just talking shop. It's life is cool. That is a trip, man. Yes. The milk bar one amazing shows <laughs> Two perspective and positivity. It, it really has improved my life and it sounds like it's improved your life a ton. Uh, yeah. it, it's, it's amazing. Like just not com- realizing, oh, I'm complaining about something where look at my life. It's pretty good. Like I just need to keep going and keep doing what I've been doing and stay positive and stay appreciative, man. It has been great to talk to you. Uh, the first time we played with yellow card was, uh, somewhere in California. It was like, Mm -hmm. uh, San Bernardino or something like that. And, and I just heard, heard you guys were on the bill and then there you are. Boom. It was, you guys blew up after that. As soon as, as soon as you guys were, were, (laughs) Yeah, it was great. And uh, by the way, shout out to Sean Mackin. <laughs> he doesn't live oh, in Washington boy. State anymore, but he just moved out. Really? Oh, that's kind of sad. No. I, every, yeah, yeah. It's probably the same same pe- things, things that people thought when I moved out of Washington State, even though I never actually permanently right. moved out. But right. anyway, yeah, no, no. There's there's so many, so many, so many great memories of just hanging out seeing you guys, um, but thinking way back to Jacksonville and to the milk bar, man, that was, that was a sweaty place. (laughs) Yes, it was, man. All those basement shows, man, I saw just, just, that was my, that was our place. I thought that I was, I always thought they called it, of course, I know why they called it the milk bar, but I thought they called it the milk bar because the, the ceiling was dripping with sweat. (laughs) It definitely was, man. So unsafe too. like looking back on, you know, some of the, some of the tragedies that have happened in like (laughs) nightclubs and things in the last couple of decades, like that place would have been an app, dude, there was one way out up a flight of stairs. It was in a basement and like there were, they were over capacity every single weekend to the brim. Yeah. (laughs) They dodged some bullets. Yeah. Yeah. And, insane but i yeah i remember coming out of that place sometimes just gasping for air you know like coming up the top of the stairs like after a a no effects pit just like (sighs) just just dying to breathe like because there was 500 people in a 250 cap room all just sweating and moshing and it was crazy man yeah the dressing room there wasn't much uh, I, don't <laughs> I don't remember, remember much. It. <laughs> yeah, it's it was all dark in there. Is is that's yep. what I remember. It was very dark. Yeah, it was a basement with like four park hands. That yeah, was it. <laughs> <laughs> it it probably. I mean, it probably would look very different from what I remember in my mind right now. It'd probably I look even to worse. Honest, to be honest, uh, someone yeah, someone can can at me online about it, but I uh, seg see segue. See what I'm doing here. There you go. Um, <laughs> but I don't know if it's still even there or not. 
Um, so who knows, but, uh, you were asking me where people can find me and stuff. Yep. So, uh, if, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much every social media thing I have is just my full name at William Ryan key. That's my Instagram, my Twitter, uh, most importantly right now, my Twitch channel, trying to get it going. If, if you're uh, interested in watching me produce some music and just hanging and chatting, we talk, you know, talk about old stories on the road and people ask questions about songs and, uh, it's a really good, really good time. And it's pretty much five days a week. So, um, if you want to come hang, that would be rad, but, um, yeah, that's, that's my, that's what I got going on right now. Right on. That's exciting, man. I'm really happy for you. Thanks, dude. Thanks I appreciate for doing you having it. me on so I could share it with the world and all that. Um, and, uh, yeah, best to you guys and tell the dudes I said, hello. Haven't seen either of them in a long, long time. I will do. We'll do. All right. We'll see you on Twitch. All right, bud. Thanks all so right. much, Mike. Thank you. Take care. Later.